Hello everyone, update number two from USA Volleyball, COVID-19. Roughly five days after the first update, it is uh, March 3rd. The World Health Organization raised the alert uh, on the risk of impact of COVID-19 to very high from high a couple days ago. Uh, this comes as the spread has uh, gone around the world to uh, 70 countries and a few areas have seen a significant increase in confirmed cases, Korea, Italy, and Iran. A couple notes from a recent update from the World Health Organization Director General, Dr. Adhanam, yesterday gave an update, wanted to share a few notes. The number of cases in China continue to decline. In the last 24 hours, there are almost nine times more cases reported outside China than in. Half of the cases outside of China are in Korea. So China has actually done a pretty nice job containing the virus and actually giving everyone else some hope and uh, confidence that this actually can be managed. Dr. Ed Hanum also uh, continues, if this was an influenza epidemic, we would have expected to see widespread community transition across the globe by now and efforts to slow it down or contain it would not be feasible. But he says containment of COVID-19 is feasible. With early aggressive measures, measures, countries can stop transmission and save lives. He also talks about, you know, the pandemic idea and says he'll say it uh, again, like he said it before. He won't hesitate to describe this as a pandemic if that's what the evidence suggests. Um, but he says we need to see this in perspective. Uh, of the 89,000 cases, roughly 89,000 cases reported globally so far, uh, we know the number's much higher than that, but that's the confirmed cases. 90% are in China, mostly in one province. So uh, he said the majority of the other cases reported outside China have come from three countries. So although there are 70 countries that are reporting coronavirus, uh, most of them have a very small number, um, and some of them just have one, but there's several of them that are under 10, and really only three that have significant number of cases. United States, we have about 90 cases. Uh, almost half of those are from the Diamond Princess cruise ship uh, that came to the United States. There's still little immediate risk in the USA. However, that can obviously change. Uh, this disease is very contagious and could easily change the scope here in the United States if uh, measures aren't um, taken serious enough. We've had six deaths. Most of the deaths have been in elderly and those with compromised immune system. Um, and comorbidities, meaning they had some other health conditions going on that made them vulnerable to significant uh, symptoms from the virus. Fortunately, children don't appear to be as susceptible or they're not. Uh, the rates of coronavirus in children are a lot smaller than in the elderly. So how do we proceed? And Dr. Adhanam says there's no one size fits all approach. And this is where you're seeing just so much um, difficulty uh, with entities trying to figure out exactly how to proceed. Um, there's still um, you know, a lot of opportunity for this disease to spread. And so the idea of social distancing has been coming up. Um, you know, Dr. Adhanam states that um, individuals, families, and communities should follow the advice provided by local health authorities and local health professionals. Um, so this idea of, of social distancing, curtailing gatherings, limiting face-to-face -face interactions, handshakes, etc. <coughs> the volleyball games in Italy are an example of, of this attempt. I know we have some indoor athletes that are currently playing in the Italian leagues and um, according to their information, some of the games have been postponed. Some of the games have been played with no fans and other games um, had been proposed to be planned to have fans allowed, but they can only be enough fans to where there's uh, six feet of distance in between in between the fans. So interesting and um, varied responses to the idea of social distancing. Um, in Italy, obviously, the number of cases is, is uh, tenfold that of the United States. Uh, a couple notes from the CDC regarding symptoms. Can someone spread the virus without being sick? Yes they could not have symptoms and have the COVID-19 and spread it. However, they also say that there, there uh, has been reports of this, but that it's not the main way the virus spreads. People are thought to be most contagious when they're most symptomatic. 
So if somebody does not have symptoms or very mild symptoms, um, chances are they're less contagious than people with extreme symptoms is what the CDC is saying. Another comment by the CDC here from a person-person spread uh, is the way that the virus is, is mainly thought to be spread. Uh, coming in contact, uh, close contact, again, uh, around six feet uh, with people uh, that are infected. And this is why, as you're looking at some travel recommendations, this is why uh, you'll see window seats being suggested um, as a uh, more clean place to sit because you don't have all of the traffic up and down the aisle of people potentially coughing and sneezing, and you're in a closer proximity to those uh, respiratory droplets, as, as they call them, the particles that uh, carry the virus from one person to another. These respiratory droplets uh, would then land in the nose or mouth of people who are nearby and inhaled into the lungs, and that's how the disease is being spread primarily. Um, one other note on airplane, air, airplane uh, travel <clears throat> that has been recommended, not sure of the scientific validity of this, but it certainly is plausible and makes sense, is to point the vent in front of your face, thereby creating a little bit of an air barrier that if there are some of these particles in the air, some of these respiratory droplets, uh, potentially those drops would be met with a strong current of air before it can actually get onto your face. Don't blow the vent into your face, but in front of it, almost creating a barrier. There has been some signs of spread uh, from contact with infected surfaces or objects. Um, you know, it might be possible that the person can get COVID-19 by touching a surface or an object that has the virus on it and then touching their own mouth or nose, possibly the eyes. Uh, but this is not thought to be the main way that the virus spreads. Certainly possible, but not the main way. Um, so again, another airline travel um, item to consider is, is definitely bring you the, the alcohol-based or microbial, antimicrobial wipes to wipe down tray tables, windows, back of seats, armrests, air vents, any surface that you're going to come in contact with. The idea of community transmission. And so this idea of uh, the, the virus being on a surface and then uh, others um, being infected through contact with that surface, um, the idea of community transmission is an illness for which the, sur the source of infection is unknown. So, it, it, you know, most of these cases can be traced back to people who either recently traveled out of the country or had known contact with someone who did. However, it looks like in the U.S. there are some cases of community transmission, and it's worrisome because a virus is much harder to control once it spreads in offices, schools, medical facilities, public sites. Um, this is according to the CDC. So one last note on travel. A couple days ago, Italy was moved to a level three, avoiding all non-essential travel. There's two regions, Lombardy and Veneto in the northern Italian um, area that were labeled level four, do not travel as that's the red zone from uh, where most of these cases are coming from. Uh, some airlines are suspending flights to northern Italy cities like Milan and Venice. Uh, also South Korea cities like Seoul. Not totally sure if this is a proactive move for health reasons or if there just isn't enough bookings to keep the flights going. President Trump stated today that the possibility of increasing travel restrictions is there, but didn't give details. Uh, there's a lot of different links that um, I think could be really helpful. There's one note, uh, a link in the email here that I'm sending the World Health Organization online training for infection prevention and control for COVID-19. So a little bit of a training program that the World Health Organization is putting together, which is nice. Um, the, the World Health Organization also has daily situation reports, which I think are valuable, and also um, a, a cool area where you can download documents that you can print out as posters and distribute um, regarding advice for the public on various things. So in summary, uh, the immediate risk in the United States is low, but there is reason for concern as the spread has increased to 70 countries and there are signs of community spread, so stay tuned.